assalamu alaikum and welcome to lecture number 18 in the course of digital signal processing and this lecture we are going to discuss uh, some part of remaining part of the all pass systems then we discuss the minimum phase systems and the properties of the minimum phase system in the previous lecture we talked about the uh, all pass system and we defined that a system for which the magnitude response is constant is called an all pass system or a system in which the magnitude response is independent of frequency so let's consider an example of all pass system consisting of a first order so shown here is the magnitude response because uh, we s defined in the previous lecture that for the uh, magnitude response that was constant and it was equal to unity r1 so taking the, uh, the expressing the magnitude response in dc bells will result into 0 db because the log of the one will be zero so uh, also whatever value we get say for example we have a system that has a constant uh, magnitude response say 2 3 whatever but the graph for the magnitude response will always be uh, straight line because it's independent of frequency the second figure here shows the phase response of all pass system so here we observe that the phase is negative for omega equals to 0 up to pi at omega equals to pi we have discontinuity and again from uh, omega equals to pi up to 2 pi we have a positive uh, value so in this example we have we have poles at z equal to 0 0.9 which is represented by the solid line and we have another pole uh, which is equal to z equals to uh, minus 0 0.59 uh, and in this case it is represented by dashed line so if you compare the two for the uh, positive value of z we have a uh, we have the mag, uh, phase response that is negative from 0 up to pi whereas in case of the uh, negative uh, z that is z equals to minus 0 0.9 in this case we have a uh, response as shown here similarly the uh, uh, third quantity that we uh, have is the uh, group delay so group delay for a uh, uh, the case when uh, z equals to uh, positive right that is 0 0.9 in that case we have the maximum uh, value around 0 and it rapidly drops when we move away from the 0 and it becomes 0 at pi by 2 similarly uh, we have the peak for the case when z equals to minus 0 0.9 at uh, pi shown in this figure are the second order all pass systems with the poles at z equals to 0 0.9 uh, e, e power j pi by 4 and 0 0.9 e power minus j pi by 4 so again this is the uh, magnitude response and you can see it's constant so and this is the phase response and this one is the group delay so uh, from the previous two examples we see that a continuous phase of a causal all pass system is always non positive for uh, omega running from 0 up to pi so phase is non negative uh, that can be seen from the uh, previous slides now uh, there was a uh, 
so if the discontinuity of the 2 pi resulting from the computation of the principal value is removed you understand what is principal value the resulting continuous phase curve is uh, non positive so for a causal and stable uh, all pass system with r less than 1 the group delay contrib contributed by a single uh, causal APS factor is always positive that you have seen since group delay of a higher order APS will will be uh, some of the positive terms it is generally true that group delay of causal rational APS is always positive as can be seen from the examples in the previous slides so positivity uh, of the group delay of a causal uh, all pass system is the basis for a simple proof of the negativity of the phase of such a system you understand the, that group delay is basically when minus the derivative with respect to uh, frequency of the phase so that means if group delay is positive that means the phase is negative the positivity of group delay and the non-positivity of the continuous phase are impo important properties of the uh, APS. So uh, uh, we end the topic of the all pass filters, uh, all pass systems here uh, by giving some uses of uh, all pass systems. They can be used as compensator for the phase or the group uh, or the group delay distortion they are useful in the theory of minimum phase systems uh, they are use, useful in the transforming frequency selective low pass filter into the other frequency selective forms they are also useful for variable cutoff frequency selective filters i think uh, these terms will be uh, because we are going to have a discussion on these uh, terms so i hope later on they will be clear to you but just here we mention the uses of all pass systems so let's start a new topic that is minimum phase systems you understand invertible systems so uh, for a system that is stable and causal and we say that the inverse of this invertible system should also be causal and stable that means for the original system to be stable and uh, causal all the poles must lie inside the unit circle and its ROC must be outside the uh, maximum uh, pole okay now because the inverse system will be such that the uh, poles of the original system will become the zeros of the uh, inverse system and similarly uh, zeros of the original system will become poles of the inverse system now if we if we constrain a restrict constrain or restrict that the inverse system should also be causal and stable that means uh, then for the original system to have stable and causal uh, inverse system then the original system poles and zeros must lie inside the unit circle so uh, if a system has poles and zeros inside the unit circle that system is called the minimum phase system now if we are given the magnitude squared function and we know that the system is uh, minimum phase system then in that case h of z is uniquely determined and will consist of all poles and zeros of c of z that lie inside the unit circle i think you can recall the previous topic that we discussed about the uh, that is a relationship between magnitude and phase so uh, there we discussed that if we are given the magnitude can we uh, construct phase from the magnitude response so 
there we discuss uh, the topic in detail now we say again we refer to that and we say if we restrict the system to have the inverse that is also stable restrict the stable and causal system that will also have the uh, inverse system which is uh, stable in causal okay so these are the restrictions so if you have these restrictions, then we such a system is called as the minimum phase system and in case of minimum phase system all the poles and the zeros of the minimum systems are inside the unit circle and in this particular case if we are given magnitude squared function then we can construct h of z from it uniquely so that means we can uh, find the uh, phase from it also now for a minimum phase and all pass decomposition so any rational sy system function can be expressed as or in fact can be uh, split or decomposed into h minimum z into h a p z where h minimum z is, uh, is the minimum phase system and h a p is the all pass system so any uh, rational system function can be expressed as this now to show that any rational function any rational system function can be expressed as uh, h minimum of z times h a p uh, let's consider that we have h of z uh, system function which has one zero outside the unit circle at z equals to 1 over c static and where absolute of c is less than 1 you understand so when something is less than 1 when you take into the ratio it results into the value that is greater than 1 okay and the remaining poles and zeros are inside the unit circle right so hope that's clear that we have a h of z that has all poles and zeros inside the unit circle except with one uh, zero that is outside the unit circle so in that case we can represent it that h of z equals to h1 of z into z inverse c uh, static right to understand so where h of z is the minimum phase system because for a minimum phase system you understand uh, all the uh, zeros and poles must be inside the unit circle so here we say that all the poles and zeros of h of z are inside the unit circle except with one zero that is outside the unit circle which is represented by this one so that means this uh, h of z can be represented as minimum phase uh, system times the zero that is outside the unit circle so we can uh, by multiplying and dividing uh, this equation by 1 minus c z inverse we get h1 of z 1 minus c z inverse over 1 minus uh, c z inverse times z inverse into c sterics right so because c absolute is less than 1 so that means h1 of z into 1 minus c z inverse is also a minimum phase system right that's also inside the unit circle right on the other hand the term uh, this one is basically all pass systems you understand the uh, definition of the uh, all pass system or you know what is all pass system so why this is all pass system because the numerator and denominator factors are complex conjugate of each other so I hope you understand okay so that means we can uh, decompose any uh, system function into minimum uh, phase and all pass systems hence for a stable uh, causal systems uh, for generalization we can say that if have it uh, if it has many zeros outside the unit circle they can still be expressed as h of z equals to h minimum of z times h a p of z we understand h minimum is the minimum phase systems whereas the h a p is the all pass system 
where h minimum z contains the poles and zeros of h of z that lie that lie inside the unit circle plus the zeros that are conjugate reciprocals of the zeros of h of z that lie that lie outside the unit circle hap is a is comprised of all zeros of h of z that lie outside the unit circle together with poles to cancel the reflected conjugate reciprocals reciprocal zeros in h of uh, minimum of z so to elaborate it more let's consider two example example 1 we we are given h1 of z and uh, this is its value and in case of h2 we have uh, this value here you can see that 1 0 is outside the unit circle where is if you look at this one so here we have two zeros outside the unit circle so let's uh, solve example 1 this one i will solve you and uh, this one i give you as a homework so let's see how we can uh, decompose it into uh, minimum and all pass system so from pre previous slides you know that we can decompose this h1 of z into uh, h of let me write quickly so you know that we can uh, decompose it into h minimum of z times h all pass of z and again uh, you have done this equation also so h minimum z times 1 minus c z inverse into z inverse c uh, steric right so this is basically the all pass right and this one is minimum phase right okay now just look at uh, the transfer function we are given here so we have a pole that is inside the unit circle it is uh, right now if we look at the uh, zero so this zero is basically outside the unit circle and it has the value minus 3 okay so we have uh, done this relationship so knowing Uh, the value of z we can find the value of c so c z equals to 1 over c steric that means c steric is equal to 1 over z and because z which is the only one pole that is outside the uh, unit circle which is equal to minus 3 so that means c equals to basically minus 1 by 3 okay now to find the all pass response we just need to replace value of c here so we have z inverse and c is how much minus 1 by 3 so this minus and this minus it will become plus so that means we have for the ap we have expression z inverse plus 1 by 3 similarly 1 minus c z now c is again 1 by minus 1 by 3 so this minus and this minus it will become so plus so we will have 1 plus 1 by 3 z inverse which is written here again for the uh, minimum phase we have this expression so knowing h ap and h of minimum just replace in this equation so this is how we can decompose a system function into minimum phase and all pass components i hope this gives you idea for the part 2 i leave it to you as a homework in many applications uh, signal has signal gets distorted by the lti system with a uh, undesirable frequency response so it is of interest to process the distorted signal with compensating system so that we can recover the original signal so this situation may arise in for example transmitting signals or a communication channel so if perfect uh, compensation is achieved then the 
input signal equals to the output signal right that's your input signal that goes to the transmission system where it gets distorted so if you have a compensating system that is uh, cascaded in series so we can for a perfect uh, case we can get the original signal whatever we transmit we receive the same signal if we assume that the distorting syst uh, system uh, which is if we assume that it is stable and causal so it requires the compensating system to be stable and causal then perfect compensation is possible only if the distorting system is a minimum phase system you understand in case of minimum phase system all the poles and all the zeros are inside the unit circle so that means its inverse is also stable and causal So if per perfect compensation, as I said in the previous slide, that if it is achieved, then we have the output signal equal to the input signal. And uh, the system we described there was the HCZ is the inverse of HD, right? So HD is a system that distorts the signal. And I hope uh, you understand that it's not intentionally placed there to distort the signal, but we talk about the general communication system things that you transmit a signal and at the receive end due to distortion you get a different signal so if the distorting things that are happen to the system are uh, stable and the uh, causal so in that case we can uh, devise an inverse system that will do the uh, inverse of what has been done to it so that means whatever we have transmitted we can receive it so how do we construct a minimum phase system so if we assume that the distorting system is known or it is approximated as a rational system function we can form an mps by reflecting all the zeros of hdz that are outside the unit circle to their conjugate reciprocal locations inside the unit circle so hd and hd minimum z have uh, the same magnitude response and are related through an all pass system that is hd equals to hd minimum z times h a p z you understand this uh, decomposition we have already done then the compensating filter will be HCZ, which will be equal to 1 over HD minimum of Z. And the overall system function is G of Z that is equal to HDZ times HCD and that's equal to HAPZ. I hope you are, you are familiar with the abbreviations we are using it here. So as per discussion of the previous uh, slide, we get the overall system function, which is GF, GFZ and GFZ equals to APS or uh, all pass system. So in this case, we see that the uh, magnitude response is exactly compensated uh, because the overall system is APS, while the phase response is modified uh, and uh, it is modified to an angle which is equal to h of uh, a p e power j omega to elaborate it further let's consider an example where we are given a system which is uh, which is distorted uh, system function and h of d of z equals to uh, as given here so by looking at the system function the distorting system function we see that it is an FIR uh, our finite impulse response system now because it is in the power of Z inverse so that means this system is causal also because it's a finite uh, duration signal error our FIR uh, response 
so it is uh, stable so by looking at the pole zero plot we can see that uh, all the po poles of it are at zero because it's a fourth or a fourth order system so all the four uh, poles they are at origin whereas the zeros of the system are two of the zeros they are inside the unit circle like uh, this one and this one right and uh, for the other two zeros they are at this position and this position so we see that two of the zeros are outside the unit uh, circle so that means because uh, two of the zeros are outside the unit circle so this system is not minimum phase system the, corres the corresponding minimum phase system can be obtained by reflecting the zeros that are at z, z equals to 1.25 e power plus minus j 0.8 pi because these two zeros they are outside the units circle so uh, we'll reflect these unit circle to their conjugate reciprocal locations inside the unit circle so you know how the procedure how we can uh, uh, decompose it into all pass and minimum phase components so let's do this on the next slide so uh, given the distorting system function as HDZ, as we talked about in the previous uh, slide, so this is the uh, system function for HDZ, okay? So we know that we can split or we can decompose uh, any uh, rational system function into H minimum and the H A P or H all pass, right? So if uh, so, we have uh, discussed this equation, and we said that if uh, a system has, for example, a single zero that is outside the unit circle, then we can represent or we can decompose the system function as here. So for the uh, zero that is outside the unit circle, uh, you see Z should have coefficient Z inverse should have coefficient of one. Whereas here we have two zeros that are outside the unit circle. So we'll take this uh, thing common so that uh, we can represent it in this format. So that means HD can be represented as the first two poles, the first two zeros that are inside the unit circle. So we have as it is, whereas for the case of the these two, if we take or uh, let me write it here. So if I take this term common, okay, from here, so because I also take minus common, so it will, Z inverse will have uh, magnitude, uh, amplitude or coefficient equal to one, whereas uh, this is plus one, so it will become minus one, okay? And also because I am taking this term common, so this will be one over 1.2 pi, or 1.25, e to the power j 0.8 pi so 1.25 is basically uh, 0.8 okay reciprocal and again this will become minus so you get uh, this term similar argument applies to this also so thus if we take minus 1.25 e power j uh, minus 0.8 pi common here and here we have plus so multiplying the two will result into zero because the, they are multiplied and the uh, bases are same so power will be added so, added. so here we have minus uh, j 0.8 pi and this is plus j 0.8 pi so they will stand cancel again minus from here and minus from here so it will become plus so it will become 1.25 okay so that's why we have 1.25 square here and uh, I hope that's clear to you now splitting it into minimum phase uh, so how we find the H minimum of Z okay so so here uh, it is clear that uh, I have just read it in here the equation for how we can uh, decompose a uh, system function into minimum phase and 
all pass system so i hope you are familiar with this equation so by looking at this equation we can see because uh, instead of one pole in this uh, sorry one zero instead instead of one zero we have two zeros that are outside the unit circle so we uh, like here we calculated c you have also done example on this one so now instead of c we will have c1 and c2 okay so uh, we can see that c1 is equal to 1 over 1.2 2 pi right 1 over 1 over 1 uh, 1 over 1.225 and uh, e power minus j 0 8 pi uh, similarly the c2 uh, c2 is reciprocal of this one with the same uh, value but the angle is different okay so thus we can write that uh, we can split okay here we have just split it uh, just because we wanted to express it in standard format that zeros that are outside the unit circle they should have coefficient equal to one so in this case these two zeros they have coefficient equal to one so by looking at this one we can find uh, i hope you know how to find the c c c's now in this case they are c1 and c2 so we can find them and then by uh, putting them here right so here we have uh, this is this hole is basically minimum phase so uh, because in this case we have two zeros so we can write one minus c1 z inverse into one minus c2 z inverse similarly uh, we will have z inverse c1 static one uh, one over uh, sorry or one minus c1 z uh, inverse into z inverse c2 static or 1 minus c2 z inverse right so by doing this so the minimum of uh, phase system can be found from here so you can see that straight away we can just replace this here so the first two zeros are as it is this is the scaling one which we got from here and then we have uh, the c1 term here and c2 term here okay so this is how you find this first part of this one and the second part of this one is uh, HAPS all pass system okay so we can straight away find it using the equation that we say H of Z equals to H minimum Z uh, into HAPZ so that means HAPZ equals to H of Z divided by H minimum of Z so that means we can straight away find it like this so here is the expression for the h a p z i hope this gives you idea shown in this figure are the magnitude response of the uh, distorting system right so this is the magnitude response of the distorting system this is the phase response and this is the uh, group delay for the distorting system shown here is the uh, again all the three graphs that is the magnitude response phase and the group delay for the h minimum uh, system i hope you can interpret them and you understand these because uh, this type of graphs we have used for so long so I think you should have idea, but maybe if you want to discuss it, so we can discuss it in the uh, live session. Again, these are the uh, responses, that is magnitude response, uh, phase response, and the group delay for the uh, all pass system. So if we talk about the inverse system for the original HD system, the distorting system, so we see the in the in case of inverse, the uh, poles of uh, H of D will become zeros for the inverse system, and similarly zeros of H of D will become the uh, poles of the inverse system. So if we see that we, we uh, as we also discussed in the example, that it has uh, four zeros two zeros inside the unit circle 
and to use uh, two zeros outside the unit circle so because zeros will become poles of this so that means the reciprocal system will have poles at 1.25 e power plus minus j 0.8 pi that is we have the conjugate pair pair of poles and uh, we'll have zeros uh, sorry we'll have uh, two poles here at this location and two at this location so because these poles they are outside the unit circle so that means the inverse system th though will be causal but it will be unstable on the other hand the minimum phase inverse would be the reciprocal of the h minimum of z and because uh, And if this inverse uh, were used in the cascade of figure 5.25, the overall effective system function would be uh, H all pass system. So let's talk about some of the properties of the minimum phase system. The first property we are going to discuss is the minimum phase lag. So, uh, we know that uh, h of z rational system function can be split into h minimum h and h all pass so in case we have a non-minimum system that means that has minimum phase and the all pass uh, system right so in that case the overall system phase will be equal to the phase of this h minimum plus the phase of h all pass system so the continuous phase or the unwrapped phase would correspond to the principal value of the h uh, ej omega that is sum of the uh, minimum phase uh, system and the uh, all pass system so i hope you understand with the uh, abbreviations used here right pv means the principal phase mps is minimum phase system cp is the continuous phase and aps is the all pass system so i hope you understand because they are multiplied so phases will be simply added so based on the previous examples we have discussed uh, we see that the continuous phase of an all pass system is negative for this uh, duration that is omega is 0 up to pi so that mean any non minimum phase system will have a more negative phase compared to the minimum phase system the negative of the phase is called the phase lag function hence the minimum phase system have minimum phase lag and hence are called the minimum phase lag system are in short the minimum phase systems similarly for the group delay so minimum uh, phase system has group delay that is less than the group delay of the non minimum uh, phase system because aps has a positive group delay for all values of omega thus if we consider uh, all the systems that have a, that have given a magnitude response the one that has all its poles and zeros inside the unit circle has the minimum group delay right so that's the minimum phase system hence minimum phase system can also be called the uh, minimum group delay system The next property we are going to consider is the minimum energy delay. So if we look at uh, these figures, we have four uh, systems, four different uh, systems, and they have the same magnitude response. If you look at this one, the, only the positions of the zeros are different, poles are fixed. So you see, uh, I think this is similar to what we have done in the previous example on the compensation of FIR systems so we have the so uh, we have four causal FIR system and they have the real impulse responses and uh, they, they have the same uh, magnitude response 
So taking the inverse Fourier transform and we find that uh, we uh, have these impulse responses for the uh, system described on the previous slide. So impulse response of the minimum phase systems appear to have larger values at the left hand side compared to all other systems. So I hope you understand a minimum phase system that the system that has all the poles and zeros inside the unit circle. So energy of the minimum phase system is delayed the least of all the systems having the same magnitude response function. For this reason, the minimum phase lag systems are also called minimum energy delay systems or the minimum delay system. Shown in this uh, figure are the uh, partial energy uh, versus the samples, right? So if we look at here, we can see that uh, the for the all uh, the systems that have the same magnitude magnitude response the energy of the minimum phase system is delayed by the least and that's because all its zeros and poles are the uh, inside the unit circle maximum uh, energy delay occurs uh, for the system that has all its zeros outside the unit circle. So maximum energy delay systems are also uh, often called the maximum phase systems. So with this we end the lecture for today. So see you in the live session. Allah Hafiz.